crunchy and grimy and horrible doesn't mean you need new headset bearings. You can sort them out. You can give them a service and I'm gonna show you how. Now that's what we need to be sorting out. A lot of people would replace that bearing. That's the crap in the bearing. You can see those bearings are getting more visible now. That feels so much better. Hey folks, we've all been there, we've picked the bike up, we cleaned it last ride and then you get it down and you turn the bars and it feels crunchy and grindy and horrible. Now don't be alarmed, this doesn't mean you need new headset bearings. You can sort them out, you can give them a service and I'm going to show you how. This is a nice cheap easy job so I'm going to talk you through it and show you how you can improve the performance of your headset in easy steps. What I should be using for this job is some Fenwick's multi-purpose lubricant, some disc brake cleaner, some high-speed grease, a bit of tissue, some emery cloth, my snap-on five, four and two and a half mil allen keys, a flat blade screwdriver, a razor blade and finally a stainless steel tray. Start with, you want to get your wheel off and you want to disconnect your front brake from the fork so you can take the forks out. The Olin's forks, nice simple job taking this wheel out. You've got your little pinch bolt here. And I like with Olin's how they're both the same size, so that's five mil. Just undo it a bit. And then the axle, do that. It's only done now. We go. And she's out. That's the wheel off, out of the way. Lay everything out nicely on here. It's always better to keep stuff tidy when you're doing this. Now, the next job um, is to take the brake off, just so you've got nothing attached to that fork when you're removing it and taking it out of the way. Normally these are two 5 mils, so I've got a bit of a mix and match on here where I've got a 4 on the top and a 5 on the bottom. That's just through lack of bolts when transferring brakes. Makes no odds really. Right, that's that undone. Sometimes, if you're lucky, they can just hang like that and you don't even have to take the bits out of them. Now the hose clamp. This is your two and a half mil. Definitely need a decent Allen key for this. Don't have a worn one because it's quite easy to round that bolt off. So this is a pretty standard stem. We've got five mil holding the um, squeeze bolt thing down there and then we've got four mils on the side. Five mil first. Now the four. I like to do a little bit each side. Don't just unwind one all the way first so that it's an even undoing of the two bolts. Go. And this is the point when you, as you get your last bolt properly undone, you want to have one hand on the forks just in case they drop out. So keep the forks up with one hand, get rid of that Allen key. Now the bars should come off, like so, and they will just go like that and hang. Nice and careful. Take your spacers out if you've got them. And give it a bit of a whiz like that. There we go. And you can leave the top bearing in there. 
And as you take this out, you see at the top here, that that bearing, you can see the rust on it. And when you move it like that, you can feel, that one's not too bad actually, but I'm sure the bottom one, if you look here on the forks, the bottom one's come out and you can, yeah, that feels ropey and it's got rust on it. Now that's what we need to be sorting out. So what I use for this is a nice stainless steel tray. It's great for when you're spraying off those bearings and it captures all the crappy, crappy fluid. So, top bearing off. I can get it off. There we go, like so. Into the tray. Now the bottom bearing. We take this bearing off the forks. Put it there. Now we want to clean everything else up before or after you do these bearings, doesn't really matter. This is where we will need our disc brake cleaner. Hardly anything left in that. That one's good. Bit of rag. And first we're going to do these headset cups. I use the Fenwick stuff, absolutely awesome products. Does me for everything like this. Get that nice and wet. And then just literally go around it and clean all that crud out. Then use the dry end. Get it nice and dry. Repeat the process with the bottom. Exactly the same. Clean that cup out. It's a dry bit. Right, now, some grease on here. So for this I'm gonna use the Fenwick's high speed grease. This is a nice light grease. Now everybody gets carried away when they do this and put too much grease in, you don't need loads. Just a nice fine covering like that. And just make sure you cover all this contact area. That's the top and then the same with the bottom. ready for the forks now. So that bit's done, now the fork. Same again, use the disc brake cleaner. And just clean up that bottom race, the bearing race. And then just steer a tube. And I also, when doing this, like to get a little bit of maintenance spray, multi-purpose, and just a little bit down there, like that. Just to get that a bit lubed up, because that goes all dry and crusty as well. Right, so that uh, bearing race is nice and clean. And same with this, a little bit of grease, like so. And just get it round there. Nice. So that's ready for the bearing now. While we're at it, same with this. Get your axle, give it a good clean off, dry it off, and then grease it just a little bit. Get those threads, like that. So that's ready to go back on. Also, <laughs> while we're at it, why not do this? A little bit on, there, on your stem pinch up bolt. And we have these bits, just everything, just everything you take off needs to be nice and clean. So, talking about how often you do this, obviously, it's not as essential in the summertime because you're not cleaning your bike all the time, you haven't got all that mud and crap going in it. Um, you know, you you can, depending on how much you ride, you could get away with doing this at the start of the season and it could last you a whole season in the summer. But during the winter, you'll know when it needs doing because it'll start to feel gritty and crunchy and that's when you need to sort it out. Ideally, you need to get to it before it feels gritty and crunchy. So that's all the parts, nice and clean and ready to go back on. So, that, I'm sure you'll agree, looks horrendous. It's rusty, it's got crud on it, it feels awful. A lot of people would replace that bearing, but this is how you can save some money.
first of all clean it like the other parts but you've got to remember that isn't going to clean the inner side of it run it through with the disc bake cleaner so that will not get rid of the rust it will clean off the outside crap do that to both of them so they look a little bit better but still look quite crappy there's still some rust on there that's where we need some emery cloth now you can hear that that's the crap in the bearing a bit of emery cloth and it's just a matter of getting it back to looking something like nice it doesn't have to be perfect it's just a matter of getting that rust off it really do this before you do your bearing because obviously if you're doing this afterwards the bits can be going back into that bearing race which is not what you want we've done the outside now the inside so that's looking a lot better on the outside same with the top one this one isn't as bad luckily it's usually the bottom one that takes most of the crap because obviously after cleaning and when you're riding water goes downhill and then it sits on that bottom bearing so that's them clean on the outside now it's time to get them clean on the inside so for this you need your razor blade now as you're filming with a GoPro it's not the best at close up so I'll try and show you this as best I can so you've got the inner bit and the outer bit and between there you've got this seal so you get the corner piece of your razor and you get like your razor blade and you get it in there and you just very carefully get it out you have to be careful you don't kink or split it so that's the bearing in there you can see now there it is you have to be really careful doing this so this is where the tray comes in handy just literally clean it with the spray you can see those bearings are getting more visible now should ideally be wearing gloves for this so that's that you can either let it air dry or if you're lucky enough like me to have an airline don't get it too close you can see all the mucky water there already on the tray don't get it too close and just like that. I wouldn't advise these bearings will actually I mean they're all different but these will come out as you can see but I wouldn't advise taking them out because it's so easy for them to fall apart so they're clean now now you want to clean this bit which sort of holds it together same again that's it dry it off now the seal very carefully dry the seal off it's really easy to break this seal so careful is definitely the word right now time to put that back together first of all obviously grease You can put a good bit on this because it will only come out anyway and then you'll wipe it off before you put it back in. Uh, that's the bearings greased up. That goes back in. Like that. And you can feel it, work it in a bit. Feel that's super smooth now. Then we put our seal back on. And you just work it and then you can normally do it with your fingernail like that and just push it back in and you'll feel it kind of clip back in just keep working it round take your time as I am doing it's not a fast job if you struggle like I'm doing with your thumbnail or if you haven't got thumbnails that are very long you can use a bit of a flat blade screwdriver well that's what I use anyway and just gently ease it back in 
Okay, so that's done. Make sure you got it the right way up. I've just been trying to fit it the wrong way up and realize why it was such a struggle to get it in. So that's done and you just basically repeat the process on the bigger lower bearing. And what you can see on this one is that the, the part that actually holds the bearings into the outer shell is actually rusty there. So I'm going to give that a little rub up as well. Just fold, get emery cloth like that, get a bit of an edge and just work around it. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better. And if you can see, that bearing is super crudded up. You can see the disc cleaner working its magic and actually forcing out all the crap. I'm not holding the airline down flat out, I'm just pressing it a little bit. Just enough to dry that disc cleaner off. That looks a lot better. Now, if you get to the stage you're doing this and all the bearings are rusty as well, then forget it, you need new bearings then. But this, I think we've just about got to it in time. As soon as you put that back on and turn it, you can feel it just feels how it should as a bearing, not all gritty and horrible. And then you seal back on. See how much quicker it goes in, putting it the right way up. Same with this one, just check it spins and feels okay, which it does. And now, just clean these off ready to go back in then when you inspect your tray get everything off it you can see just how much crap was in there look at that that was all in those bearings horrendous so everything's clean everything's lubed up all we've got to do now is reverse the original process and put everything back together bottom bearing onto the forks, make sure it's the right way up, top bearing, into here, the right way up, then get hold of the bits you require, the stem bits and headset bits, and you want your 5mm for the top cap. This is because if you're doing this on your own and you let it go, it'll all just fall out again. can be a bit tricky on your own, I'm sure I can manage it. Pull that so that your, your, all your cables are the right side of the fork. Get the fork in. Nice and slow. Get her in place. Let that down. Steady. And right, this little locator bit in. I always put it so that the splits at the back. I don't know why. You probably don't need to. But it's just one less bit that can catch crap. Be a lot less likely for the stuff to get in it from the back and the front, I think. That's in. And the top. Push that in. Nice. Some, of the, some headsets will have these that are that tight to push on that they will hold the forks. But this one doesn't really, especially when they've been freshly lubed up. Put my spacer in. Then, the bars back in. Push it up so it's in place. Stem cap in with the bolt, keeping a good hold on those forks. Once that's in and roughly tight, the forks ain't going anywhere. So that's ready to rock. That's all good. Next thing, put the wheel back in, and I like to do the brake last. Wheel in, axle in, give it a wiggle. Now it's entirely up to you whether you talk stuff up. I don't tend to talk stuff up because I do feel like I've got a good feel for how tight things should be. Some of you will disagree, but that's entirely up to you. I've never had a problem with stripping something or things coming loose. Axle tight, pinch bolt tight. Now the brake. Tighten these up until they connect and they feels like it's getting slightly tight then back it off a little bit this is how I centralize my brakes doesn't always work 
but it's the simplest way of doing it. Same with the bottom one, up, off a bit. Then, spin the wheel, lock it up, hold the brake on, finishing tightening the bolts up. It's usually enough to centralise it. If not, then you have to just back it off a bit and do it by eye. You soon tell when you spin it again. All good, no noise. Now just a cable clamp. Two and a half mil, put that in place. I might add a little bit of grease actually to that tiny bolt. Just a titchy bit. As you're tightening it, pull that up a bit, take the slack out. Careful with this, don't tighten it too much. What I tend to do is tighten it as much as I can with the small end. Like so, that's good. So now all I've got to do is get the bike off the stand, straighten up the stem and the stem cap, and then tighten the last few bolts. I can tell already, even though it's not tight, that feels so much better. And that's uh, set me up for the next several months of crappy riding. Seat down, nice brand new dropper, I haven't even used yet. Can't wait till I'm out of isolation. Two more days, then this is how I eye the bars up. Tighten that top cap and just push it forwards and backwards, make sure there's no play. Just make sure it still moves freely, which it does. So that's good. Then I'll look down it and eye it up and just uh, give it a bit of a bang until it's kind of right. I don't think there's any right and wrong way of doing that. So that's the top cap's tight, but it's in the wrong position only because I'm a bit OCD. So I'll tighten these up, match it each side and get it nice and tight. Before you do your top cap, just have a bit of a wiggle, lift it up, turn it, yeah, feels fantastic. Undo the top cap again. These are quite tricky to move, you can't sort of move them around like that. So I'll spin it all the way out, and I'll use the bolt to get the top cap out. Put it so that my one pin is level, OCD, and then tighten it back up. Finally, a lot of people don't use these, but I do. Little rubber insert makes it look nice and neat. So that's it for my servicing a headset bearing edit. I hope you like it, I hope it's of some use to you. Remember, if you do this and it's still grindy, then that's when you need your new bearings, but it'll definitely save you a good bit of money. You don't always need to replace those bearings. So give us your comments on this video. I'm quite interested to see what you think about it. And don't forget to check out the affiliates where we have links where you can save money on some of the products we use. We've got a link to our website where we've got lots of products in there and all our sponsors' websites. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And also you can become a member by clicking the button next to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Keep it pinned. <coughs> Just kind of do that with the wrong side of the uh, of the emery cloth then.